Hey guys, welcome to the Playbook UX channel, your source for all things product and UX. Today we are going to talk about personas. What are they? Why do you need them? And how you create them? Great, let's jump into it. A persona is a profile that represents your primary users. According to Nielsen Norman Group, personas are fictional representations and generalizations of a cluster of your target users who exhibit similar attitudes, goals, and behaviors in relation to your product. They're human-like snapshots of relevant and meaningful commonalities among your customer groups that are based on user research. UX personas are more robust when paired with an empathy map. UX professionals can really get in the shoes of the people they're designing for by keeping the user journey in mind. You may be thinking, why do I need a persona? First, it will help you determine who you are creating your product or service for. This allows your team to be able to navigate design and feature decisions to meet the needs, motivations, and desires of your core customer. Also, by creating a persona, you'll be able to settle disputes amongst the product and design teams since you'll have a better way of understanding your primary customer's needs and expectations. There are two main types of personas, marketing personas and UX personas. We are going to focus on UX personas, which are created to help product teams empathize with a real group of people to understand their goals and aspirations. UX personas are created from various research methods and are used to drive product user experience. Marketing personas are based on market research from your existing customers, which is useful for segmenting and targeting. Although it's tempting to create many UX personas, you should limit the number of personas to one or two. This can be difficult because you may feel like your product users have so many different behaviors and motivations, so they should each have a different persona. However, a persona is a combination or aggregation of those behaviors and motivations, so one or two personas should represent the larger group. It's important to note that if you create too many personas, your team will lose focus on the most important parts of your core user group that the persona is meant to represent. If you have five personas, your capacity to keep all of those personas at the front of your mind while making decisions is too difficult. Your team will have a hard time referencing, let alone remembering, those personas on the day-to-day. -day. Focusing on one or two personas allows your team to develop empathy for them. After all, user researchers, designers, and product managers know that empathy is the key to designing world-class products. In order to create accurate personas, your personas must be based on research. Research is used to understand the shared behavior and needs amongst your product users. We suggest you speak to five users per product type. For example, if you identify that your business needs two personas, you should speak to at least five users for each persona type, so 10 users total. Ideally, you should conduct moderated research sessions. The benefit of moderated sessions is that you have a discussion guide to guide the conversation, but you also have the ability to sidetrack and ask follow-up questions to unearth relevant details. If your business doesn't have the time or the budget to complete the full research, you can always start with a persona that is based on assumptions, competitor analysis, or internal stakeholder interviews. When analyzing the results from the moderated interviews, you should look for overlap and patterns in personalities, characteristics, or traits that the participants share. For example, if you notice a couple of your participants mention they don't trust companies to protect their data and have recently stopped using social media because they're increasingly concerned with their personal security, that is a good data point to add to your persona. The goal of creating personas is to help the product and the business teams focus on the wants and needs of their customers. If used correctly, personas can help the team settle design and feature conflicts. While making these decisions, the team is able to focus on the wants and needs of their primary persona rather than their own personal feelings towards the design questions at hand. Let's talk about conducting research. When speaking to participants during a moderated session, your questions will be different based on your product or service. However, you should make sure to ask questions about the participant's personal life. For example, where do you live? What do you do in your spare time? What are your favorite brands? This is especially important since understanding the brands your customers prefer can give you a real understanding of their personality and what motivates them. Then you should ask technical background and employment questions. 
For example, you can ask them, how do you spend a typical weekday? What softwares and tools do you use while working? How many hours do you work in a typical day? What devices do you use at work? How do you manage your hectic schedule? You should also ask professional questions about their needs and goals, such as, what are your goals? How do you plan on achieving those goals? And what do you need to achieve those goals? Often, people think about their target demographic as females who are freelance PR professionals. However, that's way too general. Instead, we want to think about Jane, who grabs coffee at her locally sourced independent coffee shop in Brooklyn before she jumps on the train to get to her standing 9 a.m. meeting while checking her email. Throughout this video, we'll build the persona for Jean. Let's jump into the components of a persona. First, you want to select an image. When selecting the image, keep in mind it should be a real person, someone that represents your target customer. Don't use a celebrity or cartoon. Instead, you want to use someone that represents the age, gender, and personality of your persona. Next, give your persona a name. You should give them a name because they are a representation of your primary user, so you should refer to them as a real person. A person has thoughts, feelings, and behaviors that you can empathize with while making design and feature decisions. Naming your persona is key. It adds a human element and creates a storyline narrative to aid problem solving. Next, give your persona a short bio based on the research you conducted. Feel free to use personal and employment data points that were shared during your interviews. Next, you should include a quote for your persona. Your quote can be a quick snapshot of their personality or something that is important to them. Again, the goal is to allow everyone on the team to empathize with the persona. An example quote for Jane is, to be good at PR, I have to be up on the trends, which is where Instagram comes in handy. This quote describes the persona's motivations and typical behavior patterns. Next, you should include different brands that represent your persona. These brands allow you to add context to your persona and will act as your mood board. When you look back at your persona at a later date, you'll lean on that quick snapshot and those brands can help trigger empathy for your persona. If your persona's favorite brands are Trader Joe's, Instagram, and Lyft, they'll guide your product differently than if their preferred brands are Maserati, Louis Vuitton, and Whole Foods. You can deduce a lot about the brands your persona prefers. If your persona likes Trader Joe's, you can assume they enjoy a friendly environment with quality products and low prices. Even though Trader Joe's has nothing to do with a software as a service product for PR professionals, the PR product can embody the same attributes and expectations of Trader Joe's in order to appeal to what Jane is expecting. Next, you should add beliefs and behaviors. For example, Jane, the freelance PR professional, says she'll do whatever it takes to protect her client. She's not afraid of hard work and to spend all day in the office jumping from client to client. She uses Instagram and Twitter to keep up on the latest trends. Next, you should outline your persona's goals. It is important to understand their aspirations since you want your product or service to fit into those goals. Jane is driven by creating the most value for her clients. She wants to be there whenever they call, even if that means spreading herself too thin. Next, you should attempt to understand their pain points. What things frustrate your persona? Do they hate doing busy work or routine tasks? Once you understand their frustrations, you can solve for them and build better products that fit their needs. Jane is frustrated by the fact that she has multiple email accounts for each of the clients she is freelancing for. It slows her down when she has to check each of those accounts during her morning commute. Next is personality or characteristics. This is pulled from the Myers-Briggs personality test. While it's a great touch, it's not completely necessary. Jane is social and loves the freedom that freelancing offers her. She is always the first one to arrive at the party and the last one to leave. I've shared a link in the description in case you want more information on the Myers-Briggs personality test. Lastly, we want to understand their motivations. It can be beneficial to show this in a more visual way so you can easily see what drives your persona. Jane has a sense of pride in her work and is motivated by the social interactions she has with family, friends, and coworkers. Once you have completed your persona, post it all around your office. Try to make it as obvious as possible so people are constantly referring to it. Lastly, your persona should have an expiration of roughly one year. The world is constantly evolving. There are new technologies, organizational processes, and customer expectations. It's important to keep your personas relevant in order to be useful and effective. 
That's all I have on personas. Make sure to subscribe to the Playbook UX channel to get more insights on product and UX.